نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا حبکا و حب من یحبکا و عمل اللذی یبلغنی حبکا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقن اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقن اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Surat al-Baqarah, verse 89 وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ قِتَابٌ مِّنْ عِنْدُ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ Allah says, And when there came to them a book from Allah, confirming that which was with them. وَقَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ قَفَرُوا Although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مَا أَرَفُوا قَفَرُوا بِهِ فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْقَافِرِينَ And when there came to them, which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah will be upon the disbelievers. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking and mentioning. Not only that that he is mentioning, he is negating and condemning the behavior of Allah. of the people of Bani Israel with the teachings of Qur'an. Allah says what? وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابُ مِنْ إِنْدُ اللَّهِ That when came a book which was from Allah and they didn't have any doubt about it. And the book was like what? مُسْوَتِّقُ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ The book was confirming that which was with them. That is this book, Qur'an, confirmed all the teachings and all the books that were revealed to them. This phrase, مُصَدِّقُ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the Qur'an many times. And I have already uh, explained this in my previous sessions, but let's just repeat it again briefly. How does Qur'an confirm in what the previous people were given? And how does the Qur'an confirm the previous divine scriptures? Number one, Qur'an and the teachings of Qur'an, they clearly show that for the Muslims and for the believers of Qur'an and for the followers of Prophet Wasallam, for completion of their faith and belief, they need to complete their faith and belief on the holy books. That is the faith and belief on the holy books will only and only be complete if the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they believe in Quran as well as in the books revealed to all the previous prophets. So, Hufa Ibrahim Aba Musa, Atayna Dawood Zabura and Torah and Injil. being given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. So until and unless the followers of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the students of Qur'an, they believe in the previous divine scriptures and the holy books being revealed to the previous prophets, their iman bil qutub, their belief and faith in the books will not be complete and perfect as we did in just starting session of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah had said what? Who are going to be the guided and the pious people? يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ That they believe in the book revealed to Prophet ﷺ and the books revealed before him. 
And the second thing how Quran does, how Quran is musaddiqul lima bayna yadayi is that the commandments, the commandments, the do's, the don'ts, the orders, the laws, permissible, non-permissible, the articles of faith, they are basically the same in Quran as were in the previous scriptures. So despite the fact that Quran supports and augments the teachings of their books, the obstinate people of Bani Israel, they fail to believe in the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu and the Holy Quran and the truth of the Holy Quran. So Allah comments that this was their behavior and response with Prophet Sallallahu and the Quran. Although before the prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu and before the revolution of Quran, they were very eagerly waiting for they were very eagerly waiting for and looking forward for the arrival of the Prophet As is being said here, وَقَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِهُونَ لِلَّذِينَ قَفَرُوا So what was all this about? Now, to explain this, you have to understand the basic history of the people of Bani Israel. The people of Bani Israel, because of their disobedience and because of their transgressions, they were cursed. They were cursed and by the wrath of Allah, they were punished by Allah. And as a punishment by the order of Allah, their enemies were imposed on them. And their enemies, they persecuted them. They were harsh to them. They maltreated them. And then oppressed by the tyranny of their enemies, they used to look forward to the arrival of the Prophet, whose arrival had been already prophesized in their books. Arrival of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's been mentioned in Quran also, Ismuhu Ahmad had been mentioned, his name, the name of his father, the name of his mother, the, the state, the country or the locality of Medina and its characteristics, the terrain, the mountainous terrain and the date trees, they were all mentioned about the last Prophet they were all mentioned in their holy books. So the prophethood of Prophet ﷺ had been prophesied in their books. They knew that when they mentioned the Prophet ﷺ would arrive, then their status would be changed. And this state of oppression they are being exposed to, then the Prophet would, when the last Prophet would arrive, then he would, he would, take away all these difficulties and hardships and their statuses would be elevated and all these hardships would go away with the help of Allah and they would be set free from the tyranny of the rulers. And that is what is meant by Kanu Yastaftahuna min Kabul. And not only did they believe in their own hearts and not only were they looking forward to the arrival of the Prophet ﷺ, but they also used to mention it. They also used to mention it and they used to talk about it with their rulers. And they used to mention the reversal of their condition in future. They used to talk about it with their enemies and they used to say that now you oppress us and now you maltreat us and now you persecute us. But just wait, wait till the time when our prophet is going to come and the conditions are going to be reversed and we are going to be the conquerors and we are going to, our condition is going to be, we're going to be set free from your tyranny. So this is all what they were looking forward to and they were they were impatiently waiting for all this and they used to mention all this and they used to boast about all this. But what happened? When Prophet ﷺ was chosen by the order and will of Allah from the, from the family of Hazrat Ismail ﷺ, from the Bani Ismail instead of the Bani Israel, then they got jealous. They simply got jealous. And it was out of sheer jealousy, sheer jealousy that from the other family tree, the other family tree was blessed with the prophethood of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They got hostile. Because of this jealousy, they got hostile and they developed enmity. 
and they failed to have faith in prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the holy quran although they had very clearly recognized him they had very clearly recognized the prophethood of sallallahu alaihi wasallam but still they failed to have faith what is the message what moral do you learn from all this what we learn from this is how very important it is to keep ourselves free of all forms of jealousy and envy how being jealous can lead a person to commit major sins and how how easily virtuous deeds all virtuous deeds and belief and faith are destroyed because of jealousy and envy and we need to sit and we need to observe around us that in the today's materialistic world this materialistic world of today we all need to make a very very sensitive and a highly critical self analysis of our souls just sit alone over the weekend just sit alone ask yourself probe your feelings and ask yourself is it so that i am jealous of anything anybody around me any of my relations my friends my siblings any person around me having something more than me am i jealous am i envious and believe you me if you happen to identify some feelings of this awful awful feeling of jealousy then do not cover it up do not justify it just accept it accept it confess it and then seek forgiveness astaghfirullah rabbi rabbi ighfir warham wa anta khairur rahimin rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin seek forgiveness in the words of quran and in the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the words of the prophets la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minaz zalimin i have wronged myself by being jealous i have punished myself and wronged myself by being envious seeing the blessings of somebody else seek forgiveness and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help help us purify our souls from this evil feeling and you know what these people of bani israel they were jealous and their jealousy was pointless as allah has mentioned just previous verse verse 86 and 87 we learned last session how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed them how allah had blessed the bani israel themselves wa qaffayna min ba'dihi bir rusul with a chain of prophets and i told you last time also that all the prophets mentioned in quran after hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam other than hazrat ismail and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the prophets they were sent in the family tree of bani israel all the divine scriptures and the holy books were revealed to the people of bani israel so what if the last and only one prophet after hazrat ismail alaihi salam was chosen among the family tree of bani ismail you had so many prophets you've already had so many holy books what if what if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the prophet or the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the next and in the other family tree and moreover this family tree of bani ismail was what they again happened to be a sibling family so you know this always how a jealous person behaves the person just just does not realize his own blessings the person just not realize that he needs to feel happy that the nurse next person who is being blessed is his own near and dear one he forgets his own blessings and he also forgets that the blessed person is his own sibling or his own near and dear ones so this is jealousy it not only makes sins easy it makes the person's frame of mind totally negative and deprives the person 
feeling of gratitude it deprives the person of all forms of rationality or ability to relate to any reasonable behavior and that is why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has warned us all against envy hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in abu daud that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said iyaqum wal hasada fa inna al hasada ياكل الحسنات كما تاكل النار الحطب guard yourself against envy for envy eats up the good deeds as fire eats up wood similarly hazrat zubair رضي الله تعالى عنه has reported in musnad ahmad and tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the melodies of the previous people are overtaking you Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is warning us of the melodies which the followers of the previous previous prophets they had developed they are overtaking you these these melodies are what they are jealousy and malice they are the ones to completely shave off and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam added i do not say that they shave their hair but they shave off the religion remember a person who is envious a person who is who has the malice of jealousy in his heart and because of jealousy is develops enmity and harsh and bitter feelings against the person he's 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 developing jealousy he will he will just shave off his religion and his deen and his belief and his faith so this is why we need to purify our hearts and souls from any forms of jealousy and this harsh feelings of envy because you know the world is a trial allah puts all his bondsmen in trial yablubukum ayyukum ahsanu amala and one way of trying the bondsmen is by unequal division of allah's blessings and in fact you know this unequal division of the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what helps us develop the feeling of gratitude isn't it so you know there is a person who is who is healthy but if he sees a sick person then only he can be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his health a rich person sees a poor person or experiences the behavior of situation of conditions of poverty then only will be he grateful of all his wealth and riches a deprived person seeing a deprived person will help us develop gratitude to what we have been not deprived of and what we have been blessed of it is it is being thirsty which makes us realize how important water is and how grateful we need to be to have cold drinks it is being hungry that we can realize the importance and the blessings of all forms of food and dishes we being blessed with so remember being deprived is a state of trial from allah and one of the things which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see and check in a deprived person is that if a person is deprived of the blessings of allah and he sees around himself people who have that blessings of which he is being deprived then allah wants to see and allah wants to check and allah wants to try that does he develop envious feelings and does he get jealous and develop bad feelings with him so this is the trial and the successful person will be who despite being derived and who despite seeing people being blessed by that blessing is not jealous and envious envy is a very very negative frame of mind it is a highly disliked thought process a person who is envious is thankless he is a mentally sick person remember a person who is envious is mentally sick because 
you know, he's just not content. He is not content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with. And he is not content with the distribution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. He's not happy with the way Allah has distributed his blessings. A person who gets envious will lose his ability to good, do, do good deeds. He may be very, very easily prone to commit sins. So it is one of the worst state of minds to be in. Quoting a few examples in the stories of Quran, Shaitan was envious. He turned envious to Hazrat Adam Islam after his creation. And he was jealous that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, his Allah is ordering me to prostrate to Hazrat Adam Islam and he's going to get one up. He was envious. How did he end up with? Maz'uma madhura, fakhruj fiha. He was, he ended up because of his envy, he ended up doing what? Aba. He refused the orders of Allah. So envy of shaitan made him disobedient to the commandments of Allah. And that he was, he was what? Fakhruj. He was turned out of paradise. He was turned out from Jannah. And he was made what? Maz'uma madhura. He was the cursed. He was the shaitan al rajim. So this is the envious behavior of shaitan which caused him to disobey, which caused him to transgress and he was exiled from Jannah and he was, he was turned to be one of the cursed ones. Then the sons of Adam a.s. Habil and Kabil, Cain and Abel, we learn the story that one of them was to be married to a sister who was who was beautiful and more had was prettier than the other and his his sacrifice was ex also accepted by Allah and then the other bro brother whose sacrifice was not accepted by Allah and he thought that the other brother has been accepted as more pious and he is going to get a prettier wife as well, he turned what? He turned jealous and he got envious. And his envy, he was what? He was the son of a prophet. Despite being the son of a prophet, his envy opened the door to such a major sin like murdering his real brother. Murdering his real brother. So this is envy. Envious feelings, envious state of mind opens the doors to the major sins, makes committing major sins very easy, makes the person vulnerable, pray to the envious shaitan and makes, makes virtuous deeds extremely difficult for the, for the envious person. And then the brothers of Hazrat Yusuf a.s. they got envious. They got envious of the fathers, Hazrat Yaqub Islam, love and affection to Hazrat Yusuf Islam. And this led to what? This envious feelings of the father's affection and love to Hazrat Yusuf Islam led the brothers plan murder of Hazrat Yusuf Islam. And who were they? Just stop and think. They were the great grandsons of Khalilullah Hazrat Ibrahim Islam. And they were the grandsons of Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam. And they were the sons of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. The sons, the grandsons and the great grandsons of prophets. They developed the envious feelings in their heart. And they end up planning murder of their younger son, or younger brother. So now you realize how important it is to identify, confess, seek forgiveness and seek and ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help to purify our souls from this wretched and cursed feeling of jealousy and enviousness. And remember it comes in stages. The first stage of envy or jealousy is what? That the person just feels deprived. The person looks around, he feels that I'm deprived, like I don't have a house of my own. Or I don't have a latest model of my car, but my brother has. 
My sister owns a huge house in the best locality of the city, but I am deprived of that. Looking around himself, in his friends, in his siblings, he sees blessings which he is deprived of. This is the first stage. He realizes and he develops a feeling of being deprived. And this causes and leads to anxiety and depression and tension. And he gets upset and cribbing and grumbling and being unhappy and sad all the time. And this might lead to like on and on to nervous breakdowns and all. This is the first stage. The feeling of and the realization of being depressed or being deprived and so on. Endless feelings. The second stage is. After the realization, a desire develops to get what he hasn't, to get, to acquire what he hasn't. And in this state, that desire, that animal desire to acquire and to obtain what he is deprived of, in this state, he forgets all. He forgets what is permissible, what is not permissible, what is halal, what is haram. He forgets the concepts of sin, of good and bad. He forgets the fear of Allah. He forgets the fear of hereafter. And then he just is blinded. Beg, borrow, steal. He resorts to all forms of unlawful, sinful means to acquire, to obtain, to get that thing which he is now desiring. And he becomes, he becomes what? He becomes... He becomes a disobedient. He becomes a transgressor of Allah. So this is the second stage. Now the third stage is the worst form of worst form of envy and jealousy is that after acquiring even he is not content. First of all, he was just looking up to other people and he was feeling deprived. The second is that he becomes an animal and just he is just blinded. Right or wrong, I have to acquire and I have to get that thing. And the third stage is when the desire is so maddening that it will be only me that will have the thing. Why should other people have these things? I and only I will have and I will be superior to the rest. And then he becomes what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ سُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ That I created you in the best form and with the best instinct but then you become the lowest of all the lowers. أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ In his manners, in his conversation, in his behavior, in his dealings he becomes an أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ then he is making fun of people, he is humiliating people, and then he is snatching from people, looting and plundering and oppressing people, and then he is, he is doing magic and all forms of major sins to ensure that it is only he, he who is the blessed and the rest are deprived and he shines out. So in the materialistic world of today, we need, to, we need to prevent ourselves from indulging in these stages and in these worst form of feelings. How do we do that? Self-analysis and a very, very strict and sensitive self-audit. Acceptance, confession, regret, repentance, promising Allah to leave, seeking forgiveness and asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. The second thing which can help us develop this nasty feeling in the heart is gratitude, shukr, gratitude. Count our own blessings. Start remembering and thinking of, of our own blessings will help us develop a positive outlook and save us from this negative feeling. The third is zikr, remembrance of Allah. This zikr will give us contentment of the soul. Allah bi zikrullahi tatma'innul qulub. And the second is, it will save our hearts from all the whispers and all the bad feelings of the shaitan. And then we need to work hard and struggle to strive for the lawful and halal things and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the supplications taught by Quran and by the Prophet sallallahu Allah says, 
that you, you work hard and then you try to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we need to seek forgiveness in the words of Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu ilayk. Rabbi ghfir wa arham wa anta khayru rahimeen. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save our souls and purify our souls. Allahumma alhimna rushdan wa aizna min sharuri anfusina. And then another supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma rahmatika arju fala takilni ila nafsi min tarfata aynin wa aslihli shakni kullahu la ilaha illa anta. So in these words, inshallah, we will be able to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the purification of our souls. Verse number 90. Verse number 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bik samashtaraw bihi anfusahum an yakfuru bima anzalallahu baghyan an yunazzilallahu min fadlihi ala man yashaw min ibadihi fabaw bi ghazabin ala ghazab walil kafirin azabun muhin. How wretched is that for which they sold themselves? That they would disbelieve in what Allah has revealed through their outrage that Allah would send down his favor upon whom he wills from among his servants. So they returned, having earned wrath upon wrath. And for the disbelievers is a humiliating punishment. <coughs> in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has again strongly condemned the negative manner of the people of Bani Israel. It was um, Allah's will, Allah is saying that it was Allah's will that when, where, to whom, he had to choose for prophethood. So if Allah has chosen Prophet wasallam from the people of Makkah, from the family of Quraysh, from the family of Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for prophethood as the last prophet and for the revelation of Quran, then they should be content. They should have been content and they should have very readily accepted the decision of Allah. But out of sheer jealousy, they could just not absorb that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in the family other than theirs. So they became revengeful and they became hostile and their attitude, they, because of this revengeful and because of this envious and because of this hostile attitude, they gained what? They gained the sh their wrath and the curse of Allah. Their attitude, they gained the curse and they got deservant of the wrath of Allah. Remember two times, two times in Surah Baqarah, mentions about the wrath and the ghazab and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the people of Bani Israel. That is why they have been labeled as the cursed and the maghdub in Quran. A sin in which the curse and the wrath of Allah is mentioned is a major sin. Uh, let me revise the definition of a major sin. What is a major sin? We do not need to have a list of all the sins which are major or minor, but we just need to know the basic prerequisites or the basic definitions of all forms of activities or behaviors which would make them a major sin. Remember, whenever or wherever in Quran or in Hadith, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the punishment of that action as hellfire? Any deed or any activity or action for which hellfire, the punishment of hellfire has been mentioned, it is a major sin. For any deed where Allah mentions that there is the wrath and the curse of Allah, this is a major sin. Similarly, for any deed or for any activity or action where Quran or Hadith mentioned 
that this is not permissible and this is haram. Like Allah says, "Inna ma harama alaykum al maita tu wa damu wa wa al kanziru wa lahmul kanzir." So this is what this is haram. This is not permissible. Or Allah says about riba, or about usury. Allah says, "Harama riba." So what is this? Indulging in any of these activities where Allah is saying haram is what it is a major sin. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions about any activity or about any deed that this is beyond the limits prescribed by Quran and Hadith, as Allah says, "Wa ma yata'adda hadud Allah," who transgresses the limits and boundaries of Allah, then this is what that deed or sin will also be. What it will be a major sin. And fifth prerequisite. Or the fifth definition of major sin is that wherever and whenever in Quran does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say, "لا يقلمهم الله ولا يزكيهم ولا ينظر عليهم يوم القيامة," that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not talk to him, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not look towards him, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not purify him on the day of judgment. So these. Three or two of these comments about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's behavior with the person because of that deed on the day of judgment, wherever or whenever in Quran or Hadith do these words come, that Allah will neither converse nor will purify, then this deed or this sin is also what it is a major sin. So these are the five definitions, and remember also. That whenever even a minor sin is done repeatedly, knowingly, obstinately, in full arrogance, a person committing minor sin knowingly, repeatedly, then this minor sin also becomes a major sin. Verse number ninety-one. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa iza qila lahum, aminu bima anzal Allah, qalu nu'minu bima unzil alayna, wa yakfuruna bima wara'ahu, wa huwa alhaq, musaddiq lima ma'ahum." قل فلما تقتلون أنبياء الله من قبل إن قنتم مؤمنين. And when it is said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they say, we believe only in what was revealed to us, and they disbelieve in what came after it. And while in it is the truth confirming that what is with them, say, then why did you kill the prophets of Allah before, if you are indeed the believers? So in this verse ninety one, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is mentioning another obstinate and disobedient behavior of the people of Bani Israel, and this behavior is what that despite the fact that arrival of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was prophesized in their books, despite the fact that they were waiting and longing. And mentioning the arrival of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had taken a covenant that they will la tuqminun nabihi wa la tansirun nabihi. They had taken a covenant with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that when after their prophets and other prophet comes, they will believe him and they will have faith in him and they will help him and support him. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived and they and he invited them, they refused. They simply refused, and they gave another lame excuse that they would only believe in the prophets who had been sent in their own ancestors. First, they said that our hearts are wrapped. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "No, your hearts are not wrapped. It is why it is because of the curse of Allah that your hearts have been sealed." Now, the second reason they came up, a lame excuse they came up with, is that we will not believe with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he is not. A prophet sent to our ancestors, and we will just believe in the prophets who were sent to our ancestors. So Allah cornered them. In this verse, Allah cornered them by asking them that if you were true believers, and if you believed as you say, you believed in the prophets who came to your ancestors. 
then why did you kill the prophets then why did you kill those prophets who came to your ancestors so allah cornered them by asking them that if they claim to have faith in the prophets of their ancestors then why did they kill those prophets verse number 92 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says walaqad ja'akum Musa bil bayyinati thumma takhastum al-ijla min ba'dihi wa antum zalimun and Musa alayhi salam had certainly brought you clear proofs then you took the calf in worship after that while you were the wrong doers the same debate continues here also Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala here is asking them that if you claim and if you announce that you will not believe in prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just because you want to cling and you just want to stick to the prophets sent to your ancestors then mentioning one of the prophets of their ancestors hazrat musa alaihi salam allah says then although hazrat musa alaihi salam who was sent to your ancestors and he also brought miracles then despite him being a prophet bringing miracles then they still did not believe in him and they started worshiping the calf so this is all being said to prove the excuse that the people of bani israel was giving they it is totally wrong and what they were uh, justifying trying to justify themselves in their opposition of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was totally lame and pointless and baseless verse number 93 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa is akhasna mithaqakum wa rafa'na fawqakum at-tur and recall when we took your covenant and raised over you the mount and you said what khuzuma atainakum bi quwwatin wasma'u Allah said take what we have given you with determination and listen they said what qalu sami'na wa aswayna they said we hear and we disobey wa ushribu fi qulubihim al-ijla bi kufrihim allah said their hearts absorbed the worship of the calf because of their disbelief qul bi sama ya'murukum bihi imanukum in kuntum mu'minin say how wretched is that which your faith enjoins upon you if you should be believers So Allah here is again reminding them of their covenant with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and after this covenant about their disobedient behavior Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to listen khuzuma atainakum bi quwwatin wasma'u to hold tightly to the orders of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and to listen to them so one of the message which i gather from here is that it is not just reading and it is not just about the reciting of allah's book but what is important is wasmau but listening listening to what listening to the recitation of quran because it itself listening to the recitation of quran will soften the hearts so listening is also important number one listening to the recitation of quran and number two listening to the teachings of quran by the teachers by the scholars of quran for the understanding and the comprehension of the message of quran is this is also important and uh, when after we need to do what we need to hold with full determination and we ho- need to hold in a steadfast manner to with the connection of quran and after connecting with quran we need to read we need to recite and we do need to listen to the quran and after connecting and listening to the quran what do we need to do we need to avoid the behavior of the people of bani israel sami'na wa aswayna sami'na wa aswayna that we listen and we hear and we disobey was the behavior of whom the cursed people the maghdub people what do the believers need to say they need to say sami'na we listen and we do what atwana we obey because of this behavior they got stuck up to the worship of the calf so people who listen to the quran but stick to the disobedience they will indulge in polytheism 
verse number 94. Qul, in qanat lakum ad-darul akhiratu indallahi khalisatan min duni nasi fatamannaw al-mawta in kuntum sadiqin. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to whom? Say to these people of Bani Israel, If the home of hereafter with Allah is for you alone and not for others, then do what? Then wish for death. Fatamannaul mauta. Then wish for death if you should be truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse has asked the people of Bani Israel, has challenged the Bani Israel that if they claim that they were the beloveds of Allah. They were the sons of Allah. They said that Nahnu Abnaullah, we are the sons of Allah. Nahnu Ahibahu, we are the beloveds of Allah. And hellfire will never Nantamasana Naru illa ayama maduda that hellfire will not touch us. Then surely if hellfire is not going to touch you and you are destined for Jannah, then you should pray for death. You should pray for death to save yourselves from the hardships of this world and you should pray that you uh, death be attended and you directly enter into the paradise and you're saved with all the hardships of this worldly life and you enter the paradise. And then in verse 95, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the actual state of affairs. In verse 95, Allah says, explains their situation Allah says wala tajidannahum ahrasan nasa ala hayatin wa min allazina ashraku yawaddu ahaduhum law yu'ammaru alfa sana wa ma huwa bi muzahzihi min al adhab an yu'ammar wallahu basirum bima ya'malun Allah says they will never wish for it ever ever because of what their hands have put forth and Allah is knowing of these wrong of their wrongdoers. And in verse number 96, Allah says, And you will surely find them, and you will surely find them the most greedy people of life, even more than those who associate others with Allah. One of them wishes that he could be granted life of thousand years. And now Allah comments that even if a person is given a life of thousand years, but this life of thousand years will do not. It will not remove him in the least from the coming punishment that he should be granted life. And Allah is seeing of what they do. So here Allah has commented on the actual state of affairs of the people of Bani Israel. And uh, the actual reason for the state of affairs is that they know that the deeds and their sins which they are up to. And uh, also here Allah explains that it is not a very long, prolonged life which is going to save people or which is going to keep people away from hellfire. It is actually the deeds and the pious life which is going to save ourselves from the hellfire and which is going to help us attain the blessings of the Jannah. رب ابني لي عندك بيت في الجنة اللهم حاسبنا حساب يسيرا اللهم أجرنا من النار ربنا لا تزع قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين سمامين